Hey everybody, it's Jim and welcome back to another lesson of Introduction to Corn Shell. Last time we went over an if, else if, else statement and we tested one variable against a bunch of different conditions and depending on which statement came out true, within the if block we executed certain code. Today I wanted to do the exact same thing but we're going to use a case statement. And what is a case statement? A case statement allows you to test one variable against several different values. The first test that is true, in other words the first patent match that comes out true, will result in the code assigned to that test to be executed until a double semicolon is found. After it breaks out of the case statement without performing any more tests. You do need to end the code associated with each test with a double semicolon before the beginning of the next patent match test. No fall through is allowed. I believe in some other languages you are allowed to fall through from one block of code to the next, but in corn shell you can't do that. The corn shell interpreter does complain. So to show you what the format of the case statement looks like, it looks like this. And once again, this stuff is commented out because this is not an actual test. If this was a real test, you would not have the comments there. But it looks like this. You start out with the word case, and whatever variable you want to look at, and you do put the dollar sign in front because you want to get the value from the variable and you say the word in. And then you give it choices, patent matches that it could have. Patent 1, patent 2, patent 2, however many. And optionally you can put in a asterisk parenthesis as a catch-all. It's equivalent to the else. And at the end of each patent you do want to have a right parenthesis that is required. And then you have your code associated with the patent that you want to execute, the code that you want to execute associated with the patent, and you do end it with a double semicolon. And you do want the asterisk parenthesis as the last value because, as you remember, the asterisk matches anything or nothing. So if you put it up the top, it will match any of these patents. So the default code will actually get executed instead of these codes that you want executed. And to end a case statement, you use the word case spelled backwards, just as in an if construct, you use the word if spells backwards in a case construct you use the word case spelled backwards. So to look at an actual example I've asked the user to enter a value. We're going to read it into the variable var and then we say case in dollar $var to get the value from it. Excuse me, case dollar $var in and here are four choices. One, two, three, or 71. That's what that will result in. If a user enters three or 71, then it will do this block of code up to the double semicolon. And our default value, if none of the other tests came out true, none of the other patent matches. And you are allowed to have comments with inside of the case statement. And in the case, you spell case backwards. So let me run this for you. So enter a value. I want to do 71 just to show you that the OR works. So value is 3 or 71. And up here, you can see that the code associated with it was print value is 3 or 71 and just to make sure you understand you are allowed to have more than one command 
before the double semicolon. You could have as many commands as you want here. Just end it with a double semicolon before the next pattern match. And let me do this test one more time. And I'm going to enter in a value that's not 1, 2, 3, or 71. And it comes out and says, please enter 1, 2, 3, or 71, which, as you can see, was in fact the catch all for any invalid arguments. The asterisk right parenthesis says, print, please enter a value of 1, 2, 3, or 71. So to quickly go over the example from last time, we ask the user to please enter the type of backup you want done. We give them choices A, B, C, or D, and then we print out which, what those letters mean. And then we read the response into a variable called response. And the case statement for this is case dollar response because we want to look at the value within response in. And our first choice is the square bracket A lowercase and A uppercase square bracket. And if the user does enter an A, we say print starting the daily backup, which you always want to tell them what you're doing. And then we'd run our fictitious backup, which I've commented out. And then you end it with a double semicolon. And you notice I have white space here. That's perfectly cool. It's perfectly allowed. And the next choice we have is I just put this in this format just to show you that you can do any of the neat patent matching that we've gone over in the previous lessons. This says, once again, a requirement of one of whatever is within these parentheses, well, the choices are uppercase B or lowercase b. So if the user enters that in, we'd start our weekly backup, printing that message, and we'd do our weekly backup, and we'd end it with a semicolon, double semicolon, and then afterward we would, of course, break out of the case statement without doing any more tests. C is the quarterly backup. We went over this last time. D is a special backup, and once again, it's square bracket D, uppercase D, lowercase square bracket. We're going to do our special backup, which starts out by doing the daily backup. And then afterward, it tells the user, please take out the daily tape, please put in the weekly tape, and it prompts the user to hit enter, and it sits there and waits for them. So once again, the read statement can be used for waiting. Let's run this program just to see what the results look like and to confirm that they look like just like the if statement. So this is from our previous test. Here's what we want to look at. Please type, please enter the type of backup you want done. I'm going to choose B just because it had that special patent matching that was different from the rest. And it says starting weekly backup. Let's look at the code. And as you can see, it did in fact match the lowercase b that was in this at sign parenthesis uppercase b or lowercase b parenthesis.